Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your mowers have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv. Welcome to today's show. Today, we are gonna look at my build of the USS Guam. Now, we'll go into a little bit more about why the ship even existed, what exactly the Guam was, as we get into the, um, well, kind of the history and vi visual portion of uh, this video. And then we will look at uh, the build and more or less the finished product. Now keep in mind, as of the time we're shooting the video today, um, I do not have all of the railings on. I have all except for the, the main deck railings, which will probably take me another day to do. And I'm also uh, still working on the, the uh, 20 millimeter uh, or Orlicans. I have a few of them mounted, but not all of them. Other than that, the ship is pretty complete for once. So let's get right into it. Let's look at the USS Guam in 1/350th scale. This was a Hobby Boss kit, and we'll see how I built it. Guam was an Alaska class large cruiser. It was classified a large cruiser, though some people call them battle cruisers. The US Navy called them large cruisers. It was laid down in uh, February of 1942 and launched in November of 43. It wasn't commissioned until September of 1944. It displaced 29,779 tons, it had a length of 808 feet 6 inches, and a beam of 91 feet 1 inch. It had a uh, main armament of nine 12 inch guns. Now the 12 inch guns may sound familiar. That's what the USS Utah had when it was a battleship. However, these were a much improved version, much more accurate and powerful version than what the 12 inch 45 caliber guns were that were on the Utah. The ship had a nine inch armor belt and a four inch deck armor and had a crew of 1517 men. So the kit we reviewed some time ago, it's by Hobby Boss. It's the 1 350th scale USS Guam. And the uh, painting guide in it comes in this, uh, <laughs> this measure 21, which I'm not going to do. I want to do it in the dazzle scheme that it has that's unique, um, different from what the Alaska had. So here it is. I've gone ahead and made a base out of some um, wooden, and I don't know what these are called, just these little wooden spindles, painted them gold, put them on a wooden plank, and this is the base that it's going to have. You can see here I've masked off the hull so I could paint the sides in this haze gray, which is the base color for all of the other camo that I'm doing, and then the deck is deck blue, of course. And you can see I've put quite a few of the little accoutrements all over the deck. So here we are. We're going to tape certain areas off. I'm going to spray this with uh, black, and it's like an engine black from uh, uh, Floquil, whatever, their railroad colors. And then I'm going to use some life color for the uh, ocean blue. You can see I've taped that off. The masking and painting part went actually pretty smooth. It was the hand painting that uh, didn't turn out so well. So you can see the size of this thing here. Here's the hull for the Salt Lake City and for the Pensacola uh, resin kits that I got. And they had 8-inch guns. And again, this was supposed to be basically a cruiser killer. That's why I had the 12-inch guns. And you can see how long this thing is. Those hulls only go up to the end of the island on this. Just a, a huge, huge ship. So one of the problems I had is I was trying to paint some of the details, some of these smaller areas, and tighter areas with a brush. And when I opened up my paint, my haze gray paint, this is what I found. This was only after about a month of 
be announced. Let's take a look at where I'm at with this kit. Uh, it's almost done, but not quite, and there was so much brush painting that I needed to do to get this thing finalized. You can see the deck has a pattern in it, and it's fairly correct for this ship. This is different than the Alaska's paint scheme. So like I had said earlier, this is a work in progress still, although it's mostly finished. Uh, you can see I got the anchor chains on. I did have to paint them because in this kit they came in a beautiful brass color. Yuck. But I'm still putting on the 20 millimeter uh, Orlikans. And in this kit they're not too bad, so I'm going with the kit guns. We'll show you one in a minute. But this paint job was nightmarish to... <laughs> It, it, it was it was difficult. Yes, there was a lot of masking, as you can see, to uh, follow the pattern I needed to follow and airbrushing. But you get to a certain point and like masking and airbrushing the turrets just was not in the cards for me. So along with the areas like this, part of it I could mask and part of it I couldn't. So that's why some of the lines aren't perfectly straight. And it's part of why it took me so long to get this thing uh, finished because there was just so much painting on this particular ship. But there is a lot of photo etch. This photo etch was actually fairly easy for once, um, but some of it was incorporated for, well, we'll show you here in a minute, that if you didn't use it, you just couldn't build, you just couldn't build the ship completely. So, um, I'm still these recognition lights that, that are here. I am not 100% sure how they should be painted properly, so I'm doing the research on that. I know that on the port side you've got red, and on the starboard side you've got green, and other than that, um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what I need to do there. So uh, the hoses here for the um, yeah, these here, these hoses, the fire hoses, uh, I painted with a desert storm sand color. And I think these are probably, uh, uh, some kind of a haze gray or a gray color. I decided to do them in white with the, the red, um, probably inaccurate, but you know what? It helps to stand out. So there you go. Uh, these were all photo etched, so building this without the photo etch was not an option. This whole piece here is photo etch, as is this, so as is this, as is this. So you have to build the photo etch with this. Uh, the CXAM. Uh, Antenna, and you can see I tried to paint that the best I could, and there's still some brass showing through. What a pain in the neck. Uh, this this sea search radar. Um, just other other little cool little intricacies that I need to finish uh, touching up. Like I need to paint these gunmetal still. Uh, but a lot of detail to to this ship. Um, no, I don't have the airplanes finished yet. Here's the 20 millimeter Olkins, and I need to, I still need to paint them. But you can see they're not too terribly bad, so I'm going to go with them. The 40 millimeter that come in the kit aren't too bad, so I kept those. And of course, the 538s, although this needs blast bags really bad, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to build those on this. But they sh it should have them, and it doesn't have them in the kit. Um, your acetylene tanks, I believe that's what that is. Um, all these tanks here that I've painted kind of a uh, light green. And you'll see the rust effects that I've done on it. Uh, the flag, as I was putting it on, ripped and tore. The decals on this are not, are not fabulous, just so you all know. But 
And you can see the, the underneath here, the screws and all, it turned out pretty good. A little bit of weathering on the hull. A little bit of rust here on the back. These, uh, these ladders were really helpful in the kit. Now, these are supposed to be photo etch baskets, and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. After doing these, I got to these and just said, no, I have some plastic ones. I'm doing them in plastic. Don't judge me. I just, one more piece of photo etch, and I think I would have taken the exacto to my wrist. I'm just saying, this thing, yeah. You can see one of the follies here. So it's got this really neat mesh screen here and, and, and here that you have to have. Um, but when, as soon as you paint them, doesn't matter if you airbrush them, brush them, whatever, the little holes kind of clog up. So the screen doesn't do you much good. <laughs> oh, mercy. Oh, mercy. But there's like 18 of the uh, Olicans that I need to put on this still. And you can see how fun this, this paint job was. Again, a lot of it, I I sprayed the components before I assembled, or before I, when they were sub-assemblies, I should say, um, when I had a good opportunity to get a good straight edge. But then I had to come back and touch some of them up. And, yeah, some of the... Uh, my paint went bad. Um, I'll show you a picture of of that here in a moment. Um, or when it went bad, then I had to use a different paint. And so there's some little inconsistency in color, a little bit, but in the texture itself because the paint just it it dried with with brush strokes in it, particularly. Here in this area so I wasn't real happy with that but as you can see a lot of a lot of painting to have to do on this to get it where I wanted it but now let's pull out and take a look this is a huge ship by the way um, <laughs> and keep going here it's a little bit smaller than the Missouri definitely uh, not as wide but length is, is getting there. So anyway, this is how it is at this point. Uh, hopefully I'll get this thing finished up in the next day or so. But you get to see it at this point right here. So, so here's the real ship in January of 1945. Very long, beautiful, elegant ship as far as I'm concerned. And then my rendition, missing the 20 millimeter guns and a few other little details that we haven't quite finished yet. But hopefully you folks got something out of this and we'll see you again soon with another fun build.